Okay, so on to part two of sculpting this sea angel perma pet. Um, this part's fairly straightforward. Um, I took the lid for the jar that the perma pet will be in, and I covered it with a little bit of Mod Podge. Um, it really doesn't matter what you use for this. It could be Mod Podge or Elmer's glue, any white glue. The idea is just um, that the lids, that um, things like jar lids are really smooth and the clay doesn't always have something to stick to. So the idea is to give the clay something to stick to. Okay. So what I'm just going to do is start covering this lid. Um, I did the sort of base flat um, thing, and now I'm just going to sculpt some uh, little seashells on it. Um, yeah. Normally when I'm doing uh, any sort of sculpting, I have a whole bunch of reference images up on my computer. I don't for this because I have sculpted a lot of seashells. So it's just something that is ingrained in my brain at this point on how to do. So we'll start with this will be a sand dollar. It's just a disc. And sand dollars have little notches on the edges. So it's just going to be what looks good where. So we'll do a little spiral nautilus type shell. In the realm of, you know, things to sculpt. Doing this sort of not quite relief, but you know, that sort of idea. You know, it's fairly simple and straightforward, but you get really pretty results. Um, I like doing seashells. Seashells are just, you know, they're pretty and they're incredibly easy. You know, it's a lot of it's discs and spirals and squiggles and you know. So those basic shapes that you learn pretty early on in sculpting. And what I'm starting with is just a bunch of larger shells and then I will fill in the gaps with some smaller ones. Shell. Create that little notch where the hinge of the shell is. Add that to the lid. Oops.
flatten down by the hinge and get that sort of shell shape, clamshell shape. little lines of texture out that shell. Right. Next I think I'll do this little conch shell type or um conch the one looking for? No cowrie cowrie shell. That's the word I'm looking for. I just sort of oblong one size slightly more curved than the other and they have sort of this little it in the end. And on the actual shells, if you look at the, the whole shell, there'd also be, it would open up down across around here. You know, that would be two lobes, but it's gonna be like this, so. Then sort of flattened on one side, on the other. I'm not putting a whole lot of detail in right now, just sort of the basics, and you know, that's because I want this to be a little bit more stylized, I don't want it super detailed, because I want, when it's finished, the focus to be on the contents of the jar, not the lid. I want the lid to be pretty, but I don't want it to draw attention away from the contents of the jar. I think a little starfish, so you just five little balls about the same size. Ideas. These are going to be, once I roll them, will be the arms of the starfish. I'm going to roll them out so they're just about even. You know, they all match. They're basically just this conical type shape.
blend the arms in together. Now, as you're watching this, and if you're thinking, hey, I like these prototypes, I want one of my own, please buy one. Um, if you want to try to make something like this, you know, have fun. Uh, they're they're tricky. They 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 they're a lot trickier to make than they look. Um, though I definitely encourage you if you want to sculpt, you know, some decorative pieces with seashells on it like this, go ahead. I don't own that concept. Um, just you know, don't copy my perma pets. Don't use the name perma pet. Um, but wanna cover up a jar lid with seashells? Sculpt the seashells? Go ahead, give it a shot. Um, you know, anything to get other people sculpting. I I love to see other people sculpt. Um, use the same concept or the same technique with the with anything that's sort of metal. Um, you can cover mint tins like Altoids or um, if you're really ambitious, those big cookie tins you see around Christmas time that have like the sugar cookies in it. Um, or, you know, you don't even have to be doing seashells. This whole, the idea of coat the metal with um, white glue, let it dry, cover with a layer of polymer clay, and then sculpt onto it works with any sort of design. I've done um, sculpted Altoids tins, um, particularly with dragons on it, um, tr trilobites, uh, fossil designs, octopus, I mean just, you can sculpt just about anything on something like this. Um, I've done one lid for a permit pet that had tentacles all over it because that's what the person who commissioned it wanted. Or actually, that's what her son wanted. Um, she was getting it for her son, who's a big cephalopod fan. And uh, I actually got to meet him. They uh, were vacationing up in the area, and she contacted me and said, you know, my son would love to meet you. Her son was, at the time, 11. And so we got to sit down and talk, and he'd actually sculpted me a couple of little little octopus and cuttlefish, and it was just so cute there. Um, packed up in a box right now, uh, because I don't have a place to put them that's safe, but um, they were on, di before I moved, they were on display in my studio, because I love seeing what little kids create. Um, my nephews are um, five and two, and the five-year-old is, uh, you know, loves to doodle and draw and make stuff, and he's done drawings for me, and and obviously for, you know, Nana and Papa, you know, Grandpa and Grandpa, gra Grandpa and Grandma, and, um, yeah, I, I love seeing what little kids create, it's fantastic. So, yeah, this is something, you know, again, you can do with, with kids, um, older kids. Um, polymer clay is a fairly safe material. I know it's non-toxic, but it does require cooking in an oven, so, um, I suggest, you know, keep it to kids who are, yeah, at least I'd say seven or eight at least, you know, a little bit older, but um, if your kid is interested in sculpting, you know, obviously with a really little Play-Doh, but um, as they get older, polymer clay is a fantastic medium, or oil-based clays, oil-based modeling clays, um, obviously Crayola makes some, um, it's always made of oil-based modeling clay, and that's fantastic. I think that was probably, aside from Play-Doh, one of the first clays I ever used, you know, was a little kid just playing around with it before I actually, you know, decide, oh, I want to do this sculpting thing. But, you know, if your kid or any kid you know has a, you know, passion for art, encourage it. 
you know, just is the most rewarding, you know, I, obviously I've been able to make a career out of this, but, you know, even if it's just a hobby, it's incredibly rewarding and it gets, it, it, it teaches you to think in, in ways that you don't necessarily think if you're, you know, doing math problems or writing or, you know, anything else, just working, creating things from your imaginations with your hands. Um, gives you an entirely different way of thinking about uh, problems and how to solve them. So, you know, get your kids sculpting, get them drawing, get them playing with Legos, anything like that. And yes, I'm, I'm saying this as someone who does not have kids and will never have kids, but, um, you know, I want to see the next generation of, of artists come up and what they make. It's always the, just fantastic. Right now I'm just doing like this little twisty shell and I have some of these and for the life of me right now I cannot remember what they're called. Um, well, there's some type of snail shell but I'm blanking on exactly what kind. And really with these shells I just need to press them on just enough to adhere a little bit to the base. one little arm of the um, starfish reaching down, but I want to put a little bit more on the edges. I think I will do some little barnacles, which are fairly easy. Just sort of, I don't know. Um, Slightly lopsided pyramids. Pulls down the middle like that. And then just texturing lines around the outside. Actually, I don't think technically these are barnacles and limpets. Thing, you know, one of those little shelled critters that lives on piers and rocks on Long Loaf Beach. And so I'm just gonna make a bunch of those different sizes. Stick them along the Sides, just like they would be growing on, you know, a rock on the beach.
think I'm just going to do, to balance it out this side, I'm going to do some little clamshells along the edges. A different design than the other one. I think the design wants more smooth than that. So do these smooth clamshells along the edge. Just a few of them. little snail shells. I just want a little curve like that. Little periwinkles. Which I'm losing some of the curve. Just in like that and create more of the curve. Actually sure that's a little too high profile. things right there. Good. Once I shape these, we will be done the sculpting as part of this. lines. And this is what I'm wishing. I really hadn't had so much caffeine tonight. Hands are a little on the jittery side. <sighs> Just gotta shake the hand out a little bit. This is a problem with the fact that I like to work late at night. I end up on a lot of caffeine and then sometimes my hand's a little jittery. It's what? It's almost 1am right now. There. Just fix the hole on the top there. All right. So, sculpting that is so we're going to smooth everything out with alcohol. This is 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Just pour some in the cap and just smooth things out, particularly the areas where there isn't sculpting. Get a little bit, you know. Yes, I want to get some of my you know, fingerprints off this, but mostly this is to smooth the areas that are not sculpted. So you don't have any tool marks get smoothed away. Away so it can dry. Just blowing on a little bit. Get the alcohol to evaporate. Once the alcohol is evaporated, I gotta brush it with mica powders. But I need the, at least most of the alcohol to be gone. Alright. So now I'm 
need a brush. Alright, so the colors I'm using for this, I'm trying to give it a nice deep sea flavor. So I have interference blue and green and violet. Um, and these are colors that let's open up the jar. See look fairly white in the jar, but the light hits them at an angle, they shimmer. Um, with a color they with color. And then I have two duochrome uh, powders. Uh, duo green and yellow. This is you know different angles, it'll reflect bluer or greener. Or no, this is blue yellow, so bluer uh, greener or yellower. And this is blue green. This will go bluer or greener depending on the angle of the light. So we're going to start with the duochromes. This is the blue or the green yellow, and you can see I don't know how well that shows up on the camera. See, it looks more yellowy right now with the angle of the, my lamp. And it really will depend on the angle of the light that's hitting it. The angle it's hitting right now looks more yellow. Right. I don't want a whole lot of yellow tones to this, so I'm not using a whole lot of that. I want to keep this very um, very cool toned, very blues and deep sea colors. So I want some blue green. And uh, these are Perlex powders um, by Jacquard. Yeah, Jacquard Products makes these. These are so beautiful. I really do love these powders. And la you know, a jar of these will last forever. These little ones are how much? Three grams. Just three grams of powder. And they last for pretty much. I, I bought these years ago, and I still haven't worked through all of, through even one of the little jars. Um, these bigger jars, I will never, probably ever empty. And the bigger jars are how much? I think they're an ounce. Um, no, 0.5 ounces, so half an ounce, uh, which is 14 grams. But I really recommend if you're getting Prolux powders to play with, look for the, the packs of 12 different colors. Um, I believe there are three different packs. Um, either 12 or 9, might be 9. Um, yeah, and they're like, I don't know, $12 a piece, something like that. And you will get whole bunch of colors that will just last you for a really long time. Alright, so we're gonna do we're gonna work the green. And I'm just, you know, taking a little bit that's in the, the cap. Um, I just wanna get sort of where the interference or where the uh, duochrome met up the two different duochromes. tipping the jar while the cap's closed. It's really easy to pick up too much of this on a brush. Um, so you want to be careful, you want to have a light hand. I think I said in my last video on doing the Sea Angel for the, this perm of hat that, um, you know, if you wear makeup, it's the same, it's a lot like applying eyeshadow. Wanna, or a blush, really light hand. So I'm gonna, yeah, this is the blue. 
and you can see how it's white in the whitish in the cap and then as soon as it goes on the black clay it's really blue this powder the the interference is fairly translucent so yeah the light hits it, it'll shimmer blue or really not much of any color at all depending on how the light's hitting it um, I love the, the interference colors. I have all the interference colors that uh, Prolex makes, which is I need blue, green, uh, violet, gold, and red. This is the violet. This is the last color we're going to put on. I just want touches of violet here and there to just sort of contrast with the blue and green. That was me getting a little bit too much on. And the, the, the nice thing with doing it on the unbaked polymer clay is that once I do bake it, um, it will adhere right to the lid. And so, you know, we get this very sort of iridescent uh, lid. Um, you can also, with the powders, mix them into any sort of clear medium. So uh, acrylic mediums, clear glosses, um, you can actually mix them into um, one of the transparent acrylic paints, like say phthalo blue and those colors. So yeah, love these things. They they give such beautiful results. All right, so the lid is done. I'm going to stop the video and pop this in the oven. And um, I'm not going to show the remainder of assembling the front pad because it's really boring. It's just filling it up with sand and stuff and pouring the clear um, uh, resin inside the jar. Um, but I will have another video when I'm done showing off the permapat. Um, yeah, so bye. I hope you enjoy the video.